Good morning, Clyda. <laughs> I mean, Clyda. I did it. See, I did it. All right, you want to retake that? Oh, no, don't retake that because that's hilarious. If you watch part one, he forgot my name. <laughs> So I really okay, I'm going to have to, okay, I have well, to get I, only have, I only have so much room up Oh, here. and on the second part, too, he totally botched my name, so. I didn't okay. botch it, I just paused it. No, <laughs> you botched it. Okay, raise your hand if you think he botched it. He totally botched it. Okay, <laughs> all right. so I'm going to try not to laugh so hard or my mascara will be smeared. I'll look like Tammy Faye Baker or Raccoon, so. All right, all right welcome to part two. You can tell this is not. Um, yes, this we don't script very well. Well, All right, so we're going to dive right into it. The whole purpose of You said dive, not die, right? I did. You did. Okay, just D-I-V-E. The D -I -V -E. Whole purpose okay. of these two episodes is to get you to watch the video because it, it impressed both Twyla... Who's that? My co-host and I. Um, it impressed me immensely. It moved me from, from being agnostic about this to... Yeah, I think it really is. I always thought it was. Yes, yeah, so it did move me. Now, he talks about... This five, is Dr. Clapper. About, Dr. Clapper, yes. thank you. He talks about more than five, but five that spoke to me because these are events that I know are happening and have happened. And he talks about deforestation. Now, we see it a little bit uh, here in the United States, but it's a big deal in other worlds. And the rainforest is being cleared at a rate of a football field every second. At least that's what they say. Now, you can argue in the details, but we know it's happening. And here's what's really bad about it. And Dr. Clapper talks about it much better than I do. When the forest, after it's cleared, it's burned and for pasture. And then the carbon in the wood goes up and adds to the CO2 in the atmosphere and it's a double whammy because those trees are no longer there and they are the most efficient method of taking CO2 out of the air. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a double whammy on the atmosphere. Now here's the one that I want you to pay attention to. More greenhouse gases have been emitted from land use changing than from the burning of fossil fuel. So all you people that go out, and not you people, I apologize, <laughs> everybody that suggests that you're helping the planet by increasing the insulation in the existing buildings or less window on new buildings or cutting emissions in cars, which is our cars are pretty doggone clean, or solar panels, and they're good, but driving electric cars now, I love electric cars. I think they're fun to drive. They're great. And if you want I just one, want to be in a Tesla. I've never... I even... love driving a Tesla. They okay. are beautiful. They're sports cars. They're fancy. They're nice. The problem is they take the energy, instead of putting it in the tailpipe, they put it in the power plant. They just move it. Now, that's good for cities where it's crowded, probably. But they're not really helping it as much as solutions that you and I are going to talk about that he talks about. And then, of course, separating trash. Those things are nice. But if you want to do something healthy for the planet, don't encourage them to, to change your diet. To deep forest. Right. Yes. Now, 240 billion tons of CO2 has been released since the 1790. That's a long time ago. And he, in the video, he tells you to remember that number and, and watch the video and he tells you how to solve it. And it is, a, and that's why that video to me is so powerful because he shows us how to solve this and to get back a 240 gigatons of CO2. And you can't see this very well, but if you watch the video, you will. This is a 10-day satellite video of the Earth burning. It takes over, uh, over 10 days, so this didn't all happen at once. And this, that, that amazed me when I saw that, because you can't, well, you know, a photo's worth a thousand Well, words. and I think one of the things that was so interesting in this Dr. Clapper video was the reason he said he got so involved 
with the earth is when he became a pilot. pilot. Yes. And so when you mentioned that satellite, I'm like, okay, because he was looking down on, not the earth because he wasn't in yeah. outer space, but just when he was becoming a pilot or taking flying lessons and stuff, he could see what was happening. Okay, so this is the, the shortcut version, but there's no doubt in my mind that we are deforesting the, the, the planet. Now, the next thing is soil erosion, and we see that all the time. At New Orleans, the topsoil flowing by, uh, flowing down the Mississippi into the sea is a dump truck load a second. Because if you've ever been by the muddy Mississippi, as they call it now, it's, you can say, well, it's always been called that. Well, in our lifetime it has, or the uh, United States lifetime. But before that, there were trees from Florida mm -hmm. to uh, Canada, and uh, Dr. Clapper says in the video that a squirrel could climb on one of the trees and go <laughs> all the way without ever touching the ground. Uh -huh. And the, the topsoil doesn't go when there's a lot of trees and vegetation. When you clear cut it and grow crops, it all goes down into the ocean. And another one of his videos, he talks about this, all of this goes down into uh, the uh, to the Atlantic there, and that's called the Mississippi Delta, which is, has been going on for a long time. Nature does this, but we really help nature. Now, because the next subject is water pollution. Well, we put all of these chemicals, all of these, mm -hmm. um, what do you call them? I'm losing the word. Uh, herbicides. Herbicides and pesticides, and pesticides yeah. uh, on that. And that all goes into the ocean. They all get concentrated down here. And they kill all the algae, anything in the, um, in the water down there. And it's this, that dead zone is the size of New Jersey. And this, again, is something that's happening, is happening now. And so, what's the name of the book that you were talking about, uh, Ignorant? Uh, oh, Comfortable Unaware. Comfortably, comfortably unaware. unaware, yes. That was me. <laughs> I was comfortably unaware of this. And I, am, I try to be fact-based. I try to be data-driven, just like um, they are on this coronavirus. So, you know, I, I look at this and I think, well, I can't... Un I can't you know, unlearn this. I can't unknow it. So now I feel obligated to do something about it. And so I, he talked, let me go to this last thing and then we can talk about his solution. But he talks about, he throws this one up. And this I love one, these. This photos. really this spoke was, to me. Yeah, because they're visual. You know, well, you you know how much see, I like You pictures. can't see yeah. them very well, but this big blue dot, excuse me, the small blue dot are wild animals. This was back a hundred years ago, and this blue dot was wild animal. The little tiny dot you probably can't even see was humans. Now the humans are pretty good size. This is in 1970 when I was alive, <laughs> and this is the wild animal population, which is smaller. We out, we uh, civilization by 1970 had outgrown the wild animals easily. And then these two brown dots, this is the biomass of the, or essentially the weight of all of these in these things I'm telling you about. So the biomass of the farm animals, of domestic animals, was twice that of humans. And then the land required to feed all of us was, was this, this amount. So that was in 1970. Now it came to 210. Well, look at this. The domestic uh, wild animals went down. That's understandable. The human population doubled, and I didn't know that. It doubled since in that short of time. The farm animals quadrupled. And I'm thinking, now wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. The skeptic in me said, wait, you can't have humans doubled and farm animals quadrupled. That doesn't make any sense. It does if you look at another statistic, which is the increase in obesity, particularly in the United States people are eating more animal products and, as you said, uh, more um, processed food. More processed food. And foods. more fast food. And processed food places and fast food places, what do they mainly rely on? Uh, meat. Right. What and you, cheese. What is it? That, and that, cheese and what, cheese. Yeah, and cheese. Oh, they put cheese on cheese. They now, put in, cheese. now in pizza crust, but they put, put cheese, cheese inside in it. it. Yeah. Oh. oh, my gosh. Well, okay. it's addictive. 
And then, of course, again, we have uh, one of these uh, biomass of uh, land for two. Now we have one, we have fivefold. Well, that doesn't make sense. Again, it does because we have become more efficient in raising animals. We have factorized it. We have chicken factories. We have, did anybody ever drive up a Route 5? Oh, it, can you, yeah, you can't drive that. Oh, it's oh. horrible. They get them all together. They put animals closer and closer together. So to do that, they, they can't go out and graze anymore. They have to grow more food to feed them. Now, now we come to the depressing one. This it's is, not that depressing because there's always hope. That's right. Okay. And this is how he, he ends it and says, now, let me give you some hope. But this is in the year uh, 2026, which he says is only six years away. And when things are that close, I tend to be skeptical. But never mind my skepticism. <laughs> Let's assume that it will happen sometime in the relatively near future. And that is, well, we know the people are going to grow because uh, they, they've always been doing that. Maybe so, not anymore now that we have to be six So we apart. have drastically, we've increased the people, but look at the animals that have increased. That huge amount and look at all of the land that's taken away. And we know they're doing that now. We know they're deforesting parts of land. We know they're growing more and more land to grow more and more food for more and more animals. So we know this is happening. And then he gets a little depressing and he says sometime in the next century, the, oh, I, excuse me, I went back here. This is the wild animals, which is just a little dot. Next time in the, some, uh, and at the turn of the next century, the wild animals are very small and the humans are going to be very small. And he says, I'll leave it up to you how they get there. Well, that's a scare tactic, but he turns the page and he says, we can change all of this. And the way he says to change it, which is the way it will change, is be all of us to become more vegan. All of us to quit eating animal products and we can take that, we can oh, take that, um, the land that's being used to feed animals, we don't need anywhere near as much as that. We only need like 40% of that to, uh, to grow food to, to feed humans. And the rest of it, the, it will, the forest will grow back. As you know, forests will grow back. If anybody's been up to um, where the volcano up in um, yeah, Mount, St. Marsh, Helens. Mount St. Helens, yeah. so the forest will come back. And the forest is the most efficient use to get the CO2 out of the air. It will clean up the atmosphere. It will clean up the water and the, and the planet Earth can be healed. And that's the reason that I uh, got excited about this and said, yes, we should talk about this because the same method I use to get my health back, we can use to get planet Earth's health back. And you've got to watch the movie because I don't do a good job. He does a great all. job. He, no, he's, yeah, you do a great job. No, trust me, I'm not a Dr. Clapper by any means. And so if you never mind the solar panels and all that, show, tell him the statistic you read to me. Uh, Perfect. I, I will mention, though, when you said what we can do can change and, you know, make a difference. And Dr. Clapper does mention uh, Gandhi where Gandhi says, the future depends on what we do in the present. Yes. And I love that. Now, let me give you a couple of quotes from, or actually the uh, CO2 emission stuff that you were talking about. Eating one less beef burger a week is equivalent of taking your car off the road 320 miles. I okay. love that one. I do, too. What now? Wait, what? This, I love metrics. You know I do. I'm a data driven. Okay, say it again. I want okay, to... so when you eat one less beef burger a week. That's not a big deal to give up for you carnivores. Exactly. Take that one Big Mac off. Right. That's 320 miles. So how many miles do I get? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what we were talking about. We were talking about that like when California thinks of, okay, we're going to limit your water. Well, excuse me, can I put a sign out in front that says I'm a vegan, I'm saving 1,800 gallons of water a yeah. day? 
A skipping meat and cheese for one day a week is the equivalent of taking your car off the road for five weeks. That one I like. I like that one too. How about this one? Skipping steak once a week is the equivalent of taking your car off the road for three months. And once if, a week, that's it. That's not a big deal. If no, a pot, it takes. And if you go back to the water depletion, if you don't eat a pound of beef, you save one thousand eight hundred gallons of water. Yes, I mean the the solution is so obvious. It's right in front of us all these times, and it never occurred to me. And I don't mean to be radical about it. It's just common sense is that what you can do to help the earth is to minimize your animal product intake of food. I would say eliminate, but I'm a little bit more I, radical. I know. I, and, and again, <laughs> uh, she, Dottie, uh, she, Dottie, I called you my wife's name. First I'm Clyde, then I'm Dottie. Okay, who will I be? Yeah, can I be Christy this Brinkley? Person, if I could be somebody, yeah, can I be Christy person Brinkley? person next to me used to talk, we used to talk about going on a plant-based diet. And in that case... I was all in. You either did it all at once or, you know, you just had to do it that way because I did. But in this case, it's on a sliding scale, just like almost everything is. So that if you can cut back on your meat consumption, you're going to help the planet. Because we're not going to have anybody, a dictator come in and say, no, no, you can't have uh, you can't eat meat. You can't be all become vegans. That is never going to happen. No. But what will happen is, as it's happened in um, the uh, demand for meat has gone down over the years, if it keeps going down, people will quit devoting land to, and they'll quit start, um, they'll quit raising the beef, and they'll quit, that'll cause the demand of the, um, the, growing the food to feed those animals. So, we can only do it from the bottom up. I was up. just going to say, I love that point that you make, from the bottom up, only. because we still have the government subsidizing the meat yes. industry oh, and the yes. dairy they, industry. They, and more than subsidizing it, they put it on their things that they give to the school kids. You've got to have yeah. dairy as one. No, dairy should not be one. And things. Dr. Clapper spoke so yeah. highly of that when people would say, well, that's going to put all the farmers out of work. No, they're going to have to grow healthy things for us. Yeah, um, no, no, he showed no. this great this great slide, remember, where he shows a typewriter and a phone? Yes, yes. And he says, do we put the typewriter people out of business? Do no. we put the phone? No. no. It's just something that we will recognize and we will do. I have one more quote for you since you love these. If the entire United States did not eat meat or cheese for just one day a week, okay, that's easy to do, that's right? Easy. For just one day a week, it would have the same effect as not driving 91 billion miles or taking 7.6 million cars off the road. Yes. <laughs> and the, the, all transportation, all of it, um, is, doesn't put as much CO2 in the air anywhere near as much as all the farm animals. Well, I think that's one thing, we're not getting into politics, but that's one thing that Al Gore really missed out on mm -hmm. on his uh, video or little movie is that the importance of this. One more topic, one more quote on that. You can reduce your carbon footprint enormously by avoiding animal products and processed foods and switching to vegetables and fruits. An individual who does that generates only 1.1 tons of carbon dioxide annually compared to the 2.8 tons of carbon dioxide produced annually by a person who eats meat. Making minimal changes to your day can make a huge difference, not only in your health, but again, the health of the planet. Right, right. Okay. All right. So oh, I wanted to mention one other thing that's kind of off topic. I think we have a few we more got, minutes. What do we do? Okay. I, you know, I didn't realize the numbers. Al's a great statistician. He no, likes not a stat. I'm just, I'm, I'm big on metrics. And, and I didn't realize, and this was in 2014, so, and the number has gone up. I don't know the 2020 statistics or the first quarter of it, but let me, let me see if you remember this. In 2014, how many animals were killed and slaughtered for meat? I have no idea. Okay. 
You want to guess? I know no, you said you hate to I guess. I don't guess. Seventy-four billion. See, that's a number I can't get my head me around. Me either. It doesn't I, it, mean it just, anything to me. Well, I Can you tell me that if I don't, uh, if somebody doesn't have a, uh, a meal, uh, an animal a product, uh -huh. it's the same as driving, not driving 300 miles. That I, I've driven 300 Well, miles. he's a car guy. Yeah, he drives well, everywhere. Car, I, I don't drive. Right. But I'm just saying, to me, that is huge. Just think of the unnecessary, not, not just the deaths that occur from killing these animals, but the transportation, the environmental stuff they use, all that kind of stuff is just oh, absolutely mind-boggling. Yeah. And then one other thing I wanted to mention about the Dr. Clapper video when he took the question and answer period. Do you remember that? And this really yeah. speaks to our age group. Now, we're, I'm suggesting that everyone watch our podcasts. I mean, I think they're fun, but it, we're kind of pinpointing the seniors. Can I say that? The senior, the older person, yes. that it's never too late to go plant-based. So in the Dr. Clapper's video that you'll watch, the guy at the end, this isn't a spoiler alert, don't worry, I just think this is a cute thing. He raised his hand and says, Dr. Clapper, where can we find vegan retirement homes? Yes, Do you like, remember that part? You like that. And I love that. So I was going to say, you know, Al's a billionaire. It's like, Al, why don't you invest in a vegan retirement home? I'm just going to ask Al. You but know, do you know what I... Do was, you know Del Webb? Maybe he could do that. But <laughs> You Al, know what I found interesting is they have vegan actuaries. Oh, nice. That, that was in there, didn't you? you must have... Uh, see, we pick... We, we pick, pick up get, different things. That's why it's great. Yeah, yeah we pick up different that things. people that look at the life expectancy of vegans. So if you're a oh, vegan... Oh, I do remember that. a vegan, yes. you can get insurance cheaper. Now, yes. And probably health insurance, too. And so I... This whole thing is picking up. But again, I it's think it's... It's from the it's bottom. It's going to be from the bottom It's taking up. us. Don't expect the government, no. no matter which political parties you believe in... Don't expect them. We've got to do it ourselves. Absolutely. And yes. he talks about contacting your congressperson, contacting. Right. I don't know if writing letters really helps yes. anymore, but. Uh, well, I know, yeah. but that's what activists do. I'm right. not an activist. I'm a selfishist. I look out for this. Is that party. a word? Okay. So, uh, but it, but nevertheless, you can feel good about skipping a. Uh, hamburger or yeah, and so don't feel like you're selfish or being oh well you know you vegans you're this and that no. say no that's how we're helping the planet it has nothing to do with our health even though it does we can just... it does a lot <laughs> all and right so I think we better give our tips close do we... okay let's uh, uh, Twilight you're going to give the twip twip the twip all right I'm going to change my name I think what I... can I change my name to Fred Fred okay I'll be Fred <laughs> are you ready Freddie I'm ready yeah all right ready Freddie my tip, and this is going to have, it, it ties in a little bit because we're getting rid of the milk, the cheese, the eggs. Um, so I want to give you a tip on, well, you all know, or if you don't, if you're just watching this brand new, you all know my egg tip. Use aquafaba, use beans, use the bean water, but I have one on replacing butter and oil. So you can also, let's do one-on-one um, -on -one oil replacers. Mashed banana, two oh. to three teaspoons of chia seeds, and... Flax seeds. Yeah, flax seeds or chia seeds. Yeah, so that's, that's my little tip. And applesauce. Well, oh, no, butter. Butter, I'm sorry. I'm not a cook. I just... Well, me either. To yeah, but if... Lot. I was just trying to give one, but if you want to talk yeah. about uh, butter... Then even they suggest avocado puree, which I know some of you don't use. Well, I wouldn't do that. But that's all right. It's, but if you're using it... It's healthier it, than an egg. Oh, I mean... Uh, 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 oh, egg eggs eggs are better. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's much healthier. Well, that. definitely. And plus, if you're taking the one avocado puree and yes. expanding it into 12 cupcakes, let's say, yeah. or 12 muffins, yeah. that's going to be... Oh, another <laughs> off topic. And okay. And we have time for it. Okay. You had this marvelous episode on desserts and it encouraged Dottie. She made a chocolate cake, which was healthy. I looked at it. Yeah. I can't do it. And you brought the figs over. Left fig. I can't. I cannot. They were dates, but go ahead. Dates. I'm yeah. Sorry. I okay. cannot eat sweets. I, mm -hmm. I, I. And look at the change because you're talking about, again, the hummingbirds and addicted to sugar. Look at just the change. I mean, I, in my olden days, I probably could have eaten that whole chocolate cake. I, know? Could sit, I still could. If I sat down, I, I can't stop eating it. And my friend Esther that lost 150 pounds, 
talks about she's addicted, and I have to admit, I told you I was addicted to sugar, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I guess I didn't mean it, but I, I, there's, although there's no sugar in it, I just, once I start eating it, I don't know when to stop. And, and because it is so flavorful, I don't know how to say it, maybe I shouldn't, it's so flavorful and tasty, I, I don't want to eat it anymore. So I, there was two left, and I said, one for you, one for me. I said, no, you eat them both. Yeah, exactly. Well, I even think, as you mentioned, your taste buds just change. I mean, Easter is always my favorite holiday. I love Easter chocolate bunnies. Beans, jelly beans, not the healthy kind of beans, but jelly beans. It was usually sunny. So I would just, I'd pay my sisters, can I have your chocolate bunny, you know? And I always, yeah, I'd pay them to eat there. So, but now it doesn't even look that appetizing to me. I know. I'm doing something totally different. So, yeah, yeah. our oh. Easter baskets for, yes, yeah. I know, I still make Easter baskets for my daughters and Life my grandson. Changes. But there's no sugar in them. Life changes. All right, well, this was great. It was. It was, this one was actually fun. They were all been fun. Because he talked most, that. right? Yeah, because he got my name wrong twice. Yeah, so he has fun. Well, saying, good night, Gracie. Good night, George. Yeah, you can call me Gracie from now on. How would that be? That works all right. for me. We love you guys. Bye-bye.